Um, good afternoon. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rolando Mendez, and I'm here from the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico. And this presentation is titled "How We Can Get uh, How Can We Get Students to Work Online uh, in Teams in Online Courses." A little bit about the session. I'd like to know that uh, the session you're attending is what you're looking for. So. Uh, the focus of this session is to present some of the elements and strategies faculty and instructional designers can use uh, or must take into consideration when planning, implementing, and guiding uh, virtual team activities in online courses. Uh, and then uh, proposing the use of the team charter as a tool for team processes in online courses. A little bit about me. <clears throat> I'm Department Chair for Distance Learning at the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico, Ponce Campus. Uh, I'm an academic manager, a communicator, educator, problem solver. I think we all, when we work in higher education, we solve problems every day, in and outside of the classroom, organizational curricular and lifelong learner. <clears throat> and I'd like to talk about the university I come from, which is Inter-American University of Puerto Rico, an same institution, which is a private, non-profit institution founded in 1912. It has nine campuses and two professional schools. And then our Ponce campus was uh, founded more than 50 years ago. And our online project started around 1994, and we have grown ever since then. And our division, we own uh, up to date. Up to this day, we have 23 online academic programs, going from uh, associate degrees all the way to doctoral level, which started about two years ago. And then uh, we have an associate deanship for distance learning that was established in 2009, uh, and I had the pleasure of having my uh, dean of Student uh, Academic Affairs and Associate Dean of Academic Affairs in the room. And then uh, the ac uh, academic department was established in 2014, and then faculty was ascribed to that department since 2014. Right now we're about 30 full-time faculty members ascribed to that department. And I would like to start, uh, I would like this presentation to be more than a, a conversation than a presentation. I would like to ask you a question. Uh, what are your expectations for this uh, session, this particular session? Anyone? No expectations whatsoever? Okay, you're here to be surprised. So that's good. <clears throat> well, I'm going to first talk about uh, the context of our, our, our story, so to say, our conversation, which is the online classroom. And uh, any online faculty members here? teaching online courses. I guess we can all relate to uh, the challenges we face in the online classroom. I think speakers uh, during our, uh, in the morning were talking about the different challenges we face in online learning and that some, that some of those challenges are not the same that we face on a traditional face-to-face -face classroom. So a few of the things we encounter or we have to uh, find our way uh, solving problems around are diversity, accessibility, adaptability, students and faculty members' time management skills, um, information literacy skills, self-motivation, social loafing, and I have included this one because it has to do with the, what we're talk, covering, which is uh, teams, instructional design issue, the way that the course is uh, constructed, is built, is presented, and a uh, speaker this morning was talking about that uh, aesthetic elements also influence how students engage and participate in online courses and then compliance integrity issues. All of these affect student engagement, learning, performance, and retention. In terms of, of uh, what was done to address those issues uh, in this particular course, I teach at the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico. I implemented a strategy of virtual teams as a, as a tool for managing complexity. You know, online environments are complex environments, and students are not necessarily equipped with the uh, skills or the abilities or the attitudes or uh, um, the emotional intelligence to deal with those uh, with that complexity. And also, it helps create student engagement. Uh, we're taking or basing uh, this uh, implementation on a, a, a community of learners. And when we learn as a community, we can get more engagement. We learn from one another. Sometimes students are more uh, willing to ask peers questions about the course instead of uh, asking the instructor. And uh, this strategy was implemented at a course, uh, human behavior course in 
uh, Inter-American University, and usually students are from business administration programs like human, uh, human resource management, management, uh, sometimes psychology students take that, uh, those that are interested in, in industrial organizational psychology take the course as an elective, and also students from other disciplines as health science and education. The passing course in this particular time was 60% and uh, about half of the course else, uh, passed with a B grade or higher. Then we have two aspects that we have to evaluate about implementing or getting students to participate in online teams, in, the, uh, in on virtual teams in online courses. And there's the theory and there's the practice. We, we need to, what I've discovered throughout the years is that we cannot base our implementation of the strategy on experience alone. We have to also base it on theory, get to know how teams work, what are teams, how people work when in teams, when working in teams, how people work, you know, the differences between gender participation, communication processes in online environments using the synchronous and asynchronous uh, media, the media richness, uh, etc. And what do we really know about teams? Usually when, when we uh, say to our students that we are assigning a team project, they usually go like this, they, you know, they, they hate working in teams, they pr probably because they had uh, bad experiences in high school or in other uh, college courses, where usually there's one person that has to do all the work, other persons need someone leading them, and your organization processes in this team uh, in these teams have been very difficult and challenging for them, so the experience has not been uh, a good experience, so to say. Also, um, I think they also approach thinking that working in teams is doing, dividing the, the, the task, the deliverable, in equal parts when it's not the case. And at least from my perspective, it's not the case. In terms of, well, teams are a group of people that are uh, joined together for a common purpose and are accountable for that purpose. And a virtual team does that using information and communication technologies. In terms of, of when we're working in teams, we have to be aware of the team life cycle. I mean, there are five main stages or steps in the team uh, life cycle that are can explain what is happening or what have been the experience we have been facing in the online and in the face-to-face -face classroom. For example, <clears throat> we have first the forming stage. This is when the team gets together and start to getting to know each other, you know. We're saying we have this activity, uh, it's a team activity, choose your team, five members, four members, six members, whatever, and then they start like talking, trying to see who they're going to work with, this is difficult by working in an online environment because usually students are in an online environment, they do not know their classmates because they have not been necessarily following a particular sequence in the courses. Then they go through the storming process or the storming stage where they negotiate on how to work together as a team. This is when they usually have decided to uh, divide t uh, tasks into equal parts and then, or uh, when to meet, when to call, what uh, communication uh, media to use, etc. Then we have the norming process where uh, team members work together to solve a problem and in the context of the online classroom is solving or addressing tasks or the assignment or the learning activity. Then uh, performing is when the team actually works on getting that accomplished and finally the journey is when the team is faced and they this man and then the course is over. <clears throat> and usually my experience in face to uh, face to face traditional classroom with the advertising courses, they usually end up hating each other and, and saying mean stuff because you know how creative people can get and with of creative differences and how we ha should have approached the problem, etc. Then we have to uh, we not only have to know what are the stages or steps of uh, the team life cycle, but we also need to know what makes a team effective. How do we define effectiveness in terms of performance when we're talking about teams? And teams have clearly defined goals, and this is where faculty members come in, because we're the ones that set the goals for the activity, for the learning activity. They also have mutual trust and respect. Uh, when we see those bad experiences with teams, Probably it's because there was no mutual respect, there was no trust between team members. Also, there's high levels of communication, and 
this can vary uh, in each situation. I have seen teams that communicate very often, uh, experience this semester doing the project. I mean, in less than a week, we started classes last week, and uh, there are about 59 students in the course. About half of them have submitted the assignment, have enrolled in a team, have gotten to work together, have told me, oh, this team already made their assignment, and it's pretty impressive for what we're going through right now. And they have been uh, showing, demonstrating high levels of communication. I'm guessing their performance is going to be good by the end of the semester if they keep up with it. They have a climate of cooperation, cooperation, sorry, and they have a commonly shared purpose. And this, when you ask students, I, I usually have a an icebreaker activity at the beginning of the semester where I ask them to present themselves, what are their interests, so I can get to know uh, what they do, what they're what moves in, and then I ask them, um, what do you expect from this course? I want to know their expectations. Usually what they respond is, I want to get a passing grade. Uh, a few of them mention they want to learn or they want to you know, grow professionally, but they want to get a grade. So that's a, a commonly short purpose. Uh, pass the class, pass the assignment, get a passing grade. The clarity around individual goals and responsibilities, this is very important because it happens in the workplace, it happens also in teams. If, there are, if, if there's no clarity around individual goals and responsibilities, there's going to be problems. There, there's going to be trouble for a team. Why? Because, well, usually there's one that expects that the other was supposed to do the assignment or do the task, so and so. Also, the willingness to work together towards the greater good of the team. You know, uh, we have no super performers here. We all have to put in our, our, our effort so we can get that or achieve that common issue purpose and, and meet the goals, the clearly defined goals. And finally, leaders who support challenge and challenges members. Particularly, the, there's a thing with leadership, in, at least for undergraduate students, I don't know if this has been your experience, but when you talk about leadership with students, they usually think that a leader is only the person who is always uh, jumping into situations, taking charge, assigning responsibilities, but what I try to tell the students that there are many, 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 many types of leadership. And you have to de uh, determine which leadership style accommodates to what are your, what, to the team's expectations, purposes, etc. Uh, I have seen teams, I, I try to get them conscious uh, to think about the processes they're going through and how they have been working on self, uh, to solve the problem. And usually I have seen groups that have worked uh, sharing the responsibility, others have assigned or left the responsibility of leadership to one member, others have decided for this particular tax you're going to be in charge, and they switch it around during the semester, and I've seen all types uh, of leaderships being exhibited in those groups, on those teams. And four things that our uh, faculty members and instructional designers have to take into consideration when implementing virtual teams in the online classrooms are this team structure, Believe it or not, it has a lot to do with how well the team performs. Uh, it, the faculty member has to work with team and task models. Uh, students have particular thoughts about teams. That's why I ask you, what do we know about teams? What do students know about teams? What do what they know about teams? Does it reflect reality? Do we need to do a little work with them, teaching them how what is a team and how to get them to work as a team? The same with the task, the different approaches to a task. Probably the instructions and, and what has happened in recent years, we've seen students, undergraduate students, requiring more precise language when uh, giving instructions or, or instructions for learning activities. They are not good at dealing with ambiguity. So we have to say, go to the theater, knock on the door three times, push the door, go down the stairs when you reach the end, something like that when you're giving instructions for a learning activity. And then we have to work with those. Uh, we have to know, first know, what are their team uh, and task mental models and then work uh, or do whatever we have to do to work with them. Also, the communication also affects uh, the synchronous, synchronous communication, the media used for communicating with each other, uh, the frequency, the gender even uh, influences how a team works in terms of communicating processes. And it has been, studies have shown that teams that communicate more frequently are more prone or are, are, uh, tend to be more uh, successful in performing. And leadership, uh, and we talked about this earlier. 
And then we have talked a little bit about the theory and, and, and now it's putting that into the actual online classroom. Uh, and this part, I would like you to participate because I would like to know what have to share some of the experiences you have, uh, you have had with using Teams or implementing Teams in virtual or face-to-face -face courses. We can do either one of them. Challenges, the experiences, have they been good? Have they been bad? Have they been difficult? Have you had to reorganize everything because it didn't work? Silence in the room again. <laughs> but I'm, I'm guessing the common uh, experience has been we have, it has been a challenging process getting students to work in teams. Usually we have those who complain. We have those uh, students who want to do, uh, who cannot deal with other students or other team members not working at the same pace they're working, and stories like that. But uh, working with uh, teams or implementing teams in online and face-to-face -face classrooms is a very challenging experience. A challenging experience, sorry. And when we're planning, we have to define four uh, things. We first have to define the purpose. Why are we integrating teams in the online course? Are we doing it because we want to facilitate grading because we have a big group and then we, want, we don't want to receive uh, 60 essays, we want to do only 40 or 20, or are we doing it because it has a purpose? The integration of teams in the online classroom must be purposeful. We should think about that purpose. Is it suitable for the course I'm teaching, for the type of content I'm, I'm teaching? Usually this course, it works out pretty well because it's mostly theory about leadership, negotiation skills, communication, attitudes, uh, and etc. And I'm trying to implement that now in a higher uh, level course of supervision. And I'm trying to get them to work together as teams of management, of managers or supervisors working on problem solving. We also have to uh, we think about the purpose, then we think about the structure. I told you that one of the influencing factors was structure. Do we make teams uh, big, small? Usually, what is recommended is working with smaller teams, usually from four or five uh, team members. And we have to determine the amount of teams we're going to create, the amount of team members or the size of teams, usually four to six members. I prefer four or five, depending on the complexity of the activity of the level of the course, you know, if it's a course that is usually taken in the first or the second year, a bigger group helps with the challenge of getting, you know, the skills or, or, or getting organized and, and usually works with bigger groups. But it shouldn't be more than that. And then we have to decide how teams will be formed. Are we going to choose who's going to be in each team or we're going to let them decide in which team they're going to enroll? My experience, at least my experience, has shown me that <clears throat> the results are better when they choose the people that we work with. And uh, usually that's why I, I use self-enrollment, and then with students that have joined the course uh, after the enrollment process that have ended or anything, I just try to fit them in a group that I, I think can carry them through the rest of the semester without you know, uh, promoting or fostering social loafing. Then we have to decide about uh, what type of leadership we're going to uh, foster or we're going to expect from our students. Are we going to ask them to be there to be one team leader? I have seen colleagues implementing teams in the classroom and asking a person to be the leader. Please be the leader of this group. You're going to be responsible and accountable for uh, whatever happens with the group or the team. And what uh, and usually it doesn't work, but we, when we talk about the definition of teams, teams are people that are joined together and are mutually accountable for the completion of the, uh, the goal or the common shared purpose. So usually that leadership, I, I like them to share the leadership because in the real world, leadership doesn't work like that. If we, you know, if we train or educate leaders to expect them, someone to lead them to different purposes or to different goals, we won't have innovation, we won't have, we won't have creativity. I think a lot can be taken from working collaboratively. Then we have to think about, we thought about the purpose, we thought about the structure, we have to think about the deliverables. What are we going to ask them to do? And when I, I, when I talk about this uh, with colleagues, some of, 
when uh, some of my colleagues share stories about their experience with working in teams or implementing teams in the online classroom, what happens is they only have one deliverable and they form the group in two weeks and then they have the deliverable in the third week. And what we have to be conscious about is that those processes we talked about earlier, they take longer to occur in online courses. So in online environments, online environments. So what needs to happen? We need to plan this, uh, the activity spread throughout the semester. What I do is in the first two weeks, I send them the, the welcoming messages and I tell them we're gonna, I want them to know, to learn more about working in teams by working in teams and learn about the different processes so they have to enroll in a team. Then they have a small, uh, a, a very simple deliverable which consists of filling out the team charter and it's, it, it doesn't involve that much risk because it's only worth five points. So if they cannot get, I mean there's gonna be conflict, there's gonna be uh, a little bit of negotiation, there's going to be problems with communication, with getting uh, agreeing on things during those first weeks they're working together. So I am assigning them something that is not worth that much in terms of points of the final grade. Then I have them working on a, um, a little more complex activity by the middle of the semester and by the end they, they just turn in the big deliverable and usually that works better with teams in online courses because, like I said, uh, those processes, communicating, uh, getting uh, together, uh, deciding on things, trying to revise, what they're turning in takes longer in online environments. Like we have 15 weeks usually in a semester, so we have to plan that carefully. And if we try to implement that in a, like three or four weeks, all of the activities, in three or four weeks, probably we'll find uh, that most of students will not be able to complete successfully the activity. And finally, we have to decide, uh, decide, I'm sorry, how teams will be evaluated. How are we going to evaluate teams? Are we gonna evaluate them individually or as a team? I mean, what is the lesson we wanna teach them? Uh, what I do is, uh, <clears throat> I wanna teach them about teams being mutually accountable for what happens with the team. So first they decide what, how they're gonna work as a team and they decide who uh, gets excluded, who doesn't, so they have to solve their own problems. They need to work that out. And then in terms of uh, implementation, we thought about how, what's the purpose of the team, how we're gonna integrate it, how big they're gonna be, how many teams, uh, when are gonna, uh, what are the deliverables, when do, we have, do they have to turn them in, et cetera. We have to move into implementation process. And it's important that we communicate with students. We tell them that we're working in teams. Why are we working in teams? Usually when the learner understands what is happening in the learning process, I find that it's easier for them to, to get what we're trying to get them to do. So inform students about team activities in the course on the first, first week, first day of, day of class, depending on, on how you, the, the term works. And it's very important that we understand. We usually assume things about students. We assume they like working in teams. We assume they know how to communicate. We assume they know how to negotiate. And we have to learn a little bit or understand what are the students' uh, task and team mental models, as we talked earlier, maybe via survey or a, or a discussion forum, what I do is a survey to kind of get the feeling or, or the temperature of what's happening in the, with the class. And this helps you understand a little bit uh, what the student knows about working in teams and what are the attitudes. Because if they approach team activities like, oh no, this is gonna be a hassle, that's setting them up for failure since, the, since they won. And then <clears throat> there we have to guide students. We have to help them through these five stages that we talked about. We have to help them enroll in teams. What I usually, in the process, I have more, more difficulty, not more difficulty, but um, students usually ask for more help in the first stage, enrolling in teams. After that, the experience has been that they manage everything they have to do. Usually, they inform me, oh, this particular person didn't participate, so we're excluding him of the, of the final assignment just to let you know. I said, okay. 
and then we have to help them communicate and interact with each other. Something that's very funny is that sometimes students are you know, supposed to be very digital and very tech savvy, but they, their mental models are based on more traditional uh, approaches to communication. For example, one of the challenges I find students have in that uh, team charter completion activity is that they want to find a common date, an hour, and moment where they can meet because they think they have to be together in the same room or in the same chat just to work together effectively. And they tell them, you have to learn to work at different times. If someone is in South Korea or in Italy or in the United States, you have to learn to work around that. And you submit something for feedback and then you work it the next day and then you start working on that. But they usually approach teamwork with that in mind. They want to get together on a very specific moment of the day a specific day of the week just to agree on things and, and they have to work that and, and I find they find a lot of um, challenges and, I, and they usually don't think outside the box when it comes to communicate and interact with each other but uh, some groups what I've seen is the most effective too is WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp has been also very uh, useful for me as a faculty member because they can reach me through there and I can ask questions and they feel they have uh, immediate feedback. <clears throat> And then we have to help them navigate forming, storming, and norming the stages. In terms of managing the process of implementing uh, or using uh, virtual teams in the online classrooms, we have to facilitate faculty members and facilitators. We help students build trust because, like I said, building trust in a face-to-face -face in this theater would take us a couple of minutes maybe uh, a couple of days to build trust between the team members. Imagine that in a place where there's no, uh, I'm not seeing the other person I'm talking to necessarily and, and things like that. So we have to help them build trust. We have to help them make decisions. Usually students when they're uh, freshmen or, or sophomores, they don't have the skills to make effective decisions. So we have to help them make decisions. We have to help them solve conflicts, initial conflicts, because what I do is, okay, I'm going to help you with this uh, problem you're having started, getting started, started off, and then you're responsible for solving whatever comes next. And it usually works, because they decide on a set of common rules and, and common agreements that they enforce to their own members when they fail to meet those standards or they fail, fail to meet those performance standards. And then we have to help, uh, help them understand or help them be accountable for individual and group performance. Usually, we see students say, oh, it was uh, Maria's fault, it was uh, Carlos' fault, etc." cetera. Now, we have to help, uh, help them understand that as a team, they're accountable for what a individual team member does or doesn't do, and what the team as a whole does or doesn't do. And we have to help them collaborate asynchronously because, well, most of them don't know how to do this. They want you know, immediate response, they want to know, be on the same time, and we have to help them see other ways of, of human interaction and human communication. We also have to uh, observe how these processes are occurring in the online classroom. Uh, what I recommend is enrolling in, in each one of the teams so you can observe what are the group dynamics, what are the team dynamics, what's happening. And that's another thing I recommend observing what's happening with the team, how often are they communicating. And as a faculty member, educator, observer, you can make a little bit of predictions of what's going to happen or when you have to intervene, etc. Then you have to be able or be you know, available to clarify doubts that may arise, follow up, remind students of deliverable dates, uh, processes, due dates, etc evaluate team performance, and, and you, is this recommended that you use a, a standardized evaluation tool, and always ask for student feedback. There's a, the CLIA uh, instructional design model, which is a learning architect uh, instructional design model, which has the feedback loop. The fe feedback loop, what uh, proposes is that every learning environment needs a feedback loop. We have to know what student or the learner thinks about the process. How are they doing? A feedback loop is not only the grades they get or how well they perform, their, they perform sorry, on a specific activity, but their comments, what are their thoughts, their impressions. 
ask them to share their experience so you can get a, a more comprehensive feel of what's happening, of that feedback, and then you can improve the experience next time you use it. And then try to integrate student feedback into previous processes. For example, in this course, it was also a discussion-based classroom where they, 15 weeks, they had 15 discussion forums where they had to research a certain topic and then they would have to apply it to their context, personal and professional context, and they would have to react and one of the feedback uh, comments I got from the students, too much work for, for what the limited time we have. And I've been like trying to eliminate, you know, with, without sacrificing the goals of the course or the objective, course objectives or the learning experience but they found that overwhelming and I couldn't focus on what I wanted them to focus on. So integrate student feedback into previous processes, into the learning process, into the instructional design process. And then I use this uh, tool called the Team Charter. It's a document where students uh, just fill in their names, their email addresses, uh, their phone numbers, uh, uh, availability. I mean, if they're available on Mondays at, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., so they know what's the situation with each one, and then they have this document, I use this document, it's the first deliverable in the, in the course, and it usually is completed within the first two weeks of the, of the course, and it's a document for clarifying direction for the team and setting boundaries. Students have to complete it uh, during the first four weeks, usually I've done it this semester within two weeks, and I'm very surprised at the results. Uh, most teams have turned in their team charter in less than a week, which is very surprising. Probably I'm getting a different time to this particular section. Uh, this activity constitutes the first team assignment or deliverable, and it helps, the team charter helps the team become more effective by creating a climate for cooperation, uh, establishing trust and communication processes for the team, clarifying the roles, responsibilities, and expectations for each team member, and then identifying most suitable leadership style. Usually, well, you have to guide them in this aspect because what they think is transformational versus transactional. Uh, the document I use looks a little bit like this, you know, the name, the phone number, the email, the availability, then they have uh, the rules they want to set and the, the rules they agree on. And they have to clarify or establish what are the expectations for roles and processes in the team, what are the strategies they will use to enforce to guarantee fair contribution uh, and prevent, prevent social loafing and strategies for managing conflict. So if something happens, someone is not performing up to standards, they will deal with that problem, not the instructor. They will learn how to work that problem because they agree on a particular set of rules and they <clears throat> agreed on following those rules and that they agreed they will be held accountable for, the, for those groups. And this is one of the deliverables I have used in previous courses. Uh, I think this semester I, I changed it. I, I, don't, I can't recall at this moment. <clears throat> but what I had them do by the end of the semester when we're discussing teams in, the, in our organizational environment, I have them search more inf uh, research teams and propose uh, how they would implement teams in their organizations in terms of structure, in terms of performance evaluation, in terms of leadership style, in terms of, of uh, if it's going to be a team designated by the leadership uh, or if it's going to be a self-forming team, etc. And how the team performance is, uh, is going to be evaluated and how they're supposed to communicate and have some questions to guide their research and discussion processes. And they would have to make, as a team, recommendations of on creating and working it in teams, and then justify each of those uh, recommendations. And some of the lessons I have learned on how I can, can I get students to work in virtual teams, uh, this, is, this has been some of the student feedback I have gotten. Uh, some people, usually, they, they like the experience, particularly because it's not, uh, it's not that stressful because they have an entire semester to work around the the responsibilities and the processes. And they usually like the team charter and they see how they can apply that document to real life. I can use this in other courses. I can use this at my, in my workplace uh, with my team because some of them are supervisors or practicing professionals. And usually the team charter was a start to create a good team. In the end, the purpose is that we all benefit in some way from what 
each other can contribute to the team. And it, 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 usually, I like this because it helps them reflect on the learning process and on the processes they went through as a, a, when working in teams. Uh, it is a great tool for establishing rules. It is also a good tool for knowing your teammates and, and their strengths for assigning tasks. Uh, it is a guide to al that allows us to collaborate equitably as a team member, as team members, and work towards the same established goals. And in terms of the lessons learned, uh, I would have to say the integration of teams in online classroom requires understanding what a team is, a virtual team is, and how virtual teams work. I mean, it's like when you're trying a recipe, you have to understand the ingredients, what's the effect of one ingredient when combined with the other. So it's kind of like that analogy. And one common mistake is assuming, as one of the speakers told this morning, that things in the online classroom, dynamics, interactions, processes occur the same way they occur in the traditional classroom. That's like the first mistake. So we have to be aware of that. We have to think things through. We have to dig a little more, dig a little deeper, deeper about what we're trying to implement as a strategy in our online courses, and specifically, specifically with teams, how do team works in environments. And there's so many variables affecting other, other than the ones I mentioned, like gender, the media richness, uh, they used to communicate, uh, the level they're in, uh, they're sophomores, freshmen, senior. Then students to be, uh, the other lesson learned is that students tend to be reluctant to work in teams, especially because of that past experiences, bad past experiences. And then, um, and they also tend to approach teamwork as they would do it in a traditional classroom. They want to uh, agree on a date and, and time and get in on a specific things that only work in when you meet face to face. And then that's the, where all the problems and frustrations lie. Then uh, team processes take longer in online environments. Uh, this is also true for organizations, and when we use teams, of course, cultural teams, you know, in organizations, it happens the same, and then you add in the cultural aspects. I mean, people from the United States versus people from Europe, and uh, I was recently in a, you know, in an activity uh, uh, in San Diego, but uh, we were four, uh, two universities, one, and one company, one university was from Colombia, one university, our university is from Puerto Rico. The company was from the United States, but the person who received it was Spanish. So we all had different concepts of uh, punctuality. We all have different concepts of following the rules and and things like that. And, and when that cultural aspect is integrated into virtual team, that creates another complexity that teams can help manage. And then uh, deliverables must be, should be faced, should be carefully faced. Start with something little, then work into something greater or more complex. And so they can, you know, refine their, their processes, refine their dynamics. And students become better team players when they learn about the learning processes as a team. This is a true as well with critical reflection. Sometimes we make the mistake of asking students to think critically, but we don't bother to ask them if they know what critical thinking entails, you know, evaluation, uh, sentences, etc., cetera, an analysis, do, we, do they know what they're being asked to do? So students become better learners and mentee players when they learn, they, 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 they understand what they're going through, they understand what they're doing. Then try, as, as an instructor, as an online instructor, try to reduce complexity uh, for working in, in virtuality. Don't, don't be that person that makes the online experience more complicated because usually, I remember when, when online education started, a lot of people were saying, oh, I don't like that, you feel isolated. But there, there are so many tools, instructors, free tools, actually, free tools that instructors can integrate to make that experience more human and, and make that connection. Another um, colleague was talking about making a presence in the classroom. And it's not only answering messages and sending announcements, it's establishing that contact and seeing each other uh, as a community uh, uh, of practice, a community of learning. Uh, it's usually helpful when you, uh, usually I, I kept getting angry when students would tur wouldn't turn in what I asked them to turn in. 
So I started to create templates, and that has worked perfectly, you know, because I create little boxes. I want you to write this in this section. I want you to put in this, I want to insert this image for presentations, for, uh, for documents they have to sign in. And when I use templates, it works out great. It facilitates creating, but it also helps them understand what they're being expected. And like I said earlier, uh, these students are coming into uh, university right now. They are not, at least in Puerto Rico, they're not good handling ambiguity in language. They need specific language. Uh, specific instructions. And like uh, <clears throat> Dr. Caraballo said this morning, we have to be aware of, of what a word means in different societies, in different cultures, in different ages, uh, regions, etc. Also, we have to dis dissuade social loafing by empowering teams. We have to, usually we get students that want to, you know, let the other students or the other team members do all the hard work, the heavy lifting, and at the end they just jump in and, hey, we got an A. But we have to help them be aware of social loafing and how it affects them as a team. We have to communicate frequently. We also, like I said, using templates to facilitate uh, creating always meaningful feedback. As department chair, I read the evaluations of my faculty members every semester. And the things that I, I the comments I get the most from, from students is, I need meaningful feedback. I want to know what uh, I want to know what I did wrong. I want to know how can I improve. Not just oh you got this wrong. It's like you did this wrong. You can improve by adding this and this and that. You can search for information. You're you know not only by because usually I have some instructors say oh I use rubrics but explain what's behind each rubric and what's behind, the, remember the team evaluation, uh, what's behind the criteria you're using to evaluate team performance. And then integrate, get feedback, and then integrate that feedback. I ask again, this time without expecting any response. How, what can you take uh, from this uh, session to get students to work in teams? Anything, has anything that I, I share with you this, uh, this afternoon help you with, uh, with integrating or approaching teamwork in online environments or even in face-to-face -face environments? Like I said, the, uh, the trust and communication processes tend to be more complex in online environments. And if you, I mean, it took them four weeks to get to know each other, to know how each one works, how each one, the, the strengths and weaknesses, and to change them, change that in the middle of the course, you're having, you're making them go over the process. And, and I used to do that in face to face, and they always end up really bad. So I, after, you know, after working out, and perfecting, so to say, uh, the implementation of Teams. I'm doing it this way, and it has given me great results. It's a last semester because we had Marie, and that's what's another story. Uh, <clears throat> but usually the same group, they choose the group. Uh, it's a small group, and they have to be in charge of everything. I just grade. I just give them direction and grade. They do the, every, the, the rest of the work. And it has worked. I mean, I mean students are, uh, freshmen, as well as experienced students, as people that are 40 plus, etc. Any other? Here are the references, and this is my contact information. Any questions, pregunta, comments, comentario, criticism, feedback? Always welcome. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. I hope this uh, <clears throat> session has been useful for you. I'll be around during the day, so if you have, don't dare to ask, you know, in front of a big theater, packed theater, well then feel free to approach me during the rest of the afternoon. Thank you.